Good morning, everyone. This is Esmeralda, or you call me Amy. And um, I was in much prayer about this, and this is very disturbing. I, I had a dream this morning, and it's very disturbing. And I want you guys to take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. And it's a very powerful and prophetic dream. Very powerful. It's not meant to scare you, but it's very, very powerful. I'm going to tell you right now. Give me one second. Sorry, you guys. I'm getting ready to go to an eye doctor appointment, but I need to tell you this. In the dream, it was in the United States, and if you look out there, you know, meaning out there in the United States, it looked like a third world country. I mean, there were people that were starving on the streets begging for food. Um, not only were they begging for food, they were um, rioting. Um, looking for anything that they can get to survive. There was dead bodies in the street. People were dying. Kids were dying. Adults. You name it. It was dark outside. There were different military trucks roaming the streets. Uh, different, uh, not just military trucks. There were soldiers, you know, different emblems, like the United States was taken over and occupied, you know? There were also um, tourists that came to the United States, but here's the thing. In the United States, there were sections, nice sections, sections that were cut off, that were made nice, specifically for the rich and tourists. Tourists that came were from foreign countries, like typically the enemy of the United States, so it would be like China, uh, Russia, Iran, Turkey, name it. United States uh, backstabbed Turkey as well, so, you know, so, um, anyway, so they would go on tour and they would see, like, you know how you go to Mexico and you would see a lot of people begging for money on the streets or you go to Vietnam or you see them begging for food, starving and living in cardboards on the streets. That's how it looked in the United States. I mean, this was a third poor country and it looked like worse than a third world nation. I'm just giving you some access of background as to what the country looked like. So, I went to, um... I represented the saints that were being persecuted because persecution against Christians increased very heavily. I mean very, very heavily. And when I tell you it increased very heavily, I mean it did. I mean, this is not a joke. Uh, Bibles were outlawed. Couldn't have a Bible. And the Most High told me, and it's even in His Word, that He's going to test the righteous. And the righteous will go through trials. And if you believe, the righteous believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, He will deliver them. Because He will only put you through, through as much as you can handle. So in this dream, there was righteous people that were going through rough times. You know, they were starving. Okay? But... They weren't starving forever, okay? Because they trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord took care of them. But I'm not going to tell you that the, rough, the righteous are not going to go through rough times because they are. Because the Lord has to continuously test the righteous to see if you are of Him because anybody can fall off the path. The right-hand path to go on the left-hand path. They can fall off the right-hand path, which is the narrow path to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the gate, and go on the wide path, which is the left path to Satan. Simple as that. Give me one more second. I'll be right back.
Sorry, you guys. So, what happened was, was that, um, like I said, God will test the righteous to see if you are of him or not. I have to see if this is still recording. One second, you guys. Okay, it is. So anyway, he will test the righteous to see if you are of him or not. Okay, so I'm not going to lie, there were some righteous people that were starving too, but it wasn't for a long time because God took care of them and sustained them. Okay, this was in a time that I believe that the rapture has not taken place yet either, so a lot of righteous Christians were underground hiding. Okay, I don't believe the rapture took place. So I was in this room, this building, and I was hungry. And another saint came up to me. He was a young man. I could tell he was a saint because he had white robes. Um, and uh, he gave me food. Now again, I believe it was a saint or an angel of God because just the way that he was dressed, the white cloths, you know, spotless, so full of light in his, in his eyes. So I believe, in all actuality, that it wasn't another saint. I believe that that young man, um, was God, came to me and gave me food and said, Hey, you will never go hungry again. That represents that although the righteous will go through some rough times like this, they will be hungry, they're not going to starve. So I'm going to correct that. They're not going to starve. They will be hungry. They will go without food. Not for days. You know, not for, I'm not going to say days or whatever because the time of man doesn't work on God's timing. But they're not going to go through um, starvation and hunger forever. Put it that way. If you continuously trust in Jesus Christ, God will take care of you. You're not going to want for nothing. You will not perish because you will have eternal life with Jesus Christ. So I represented this, uh, the righteous saints in the dream going through heavy trials of suffering, hunger, like Christ did, being tortured, and then not charging God with one sin, not cursing God at all. And then in the dream, uh, in the dream, um, what happened was, was that because I trusted Jesus Christ, God gave me food. In other words, God's going to always take care of his righteous. No matter how much you're suffering, he'll always watch over you, make sure you're okay, and provide for you if you trust in Jesus Christ. So, like I said, this was a time that this, the, the rapture did not take place yet. And it was a lot of suffering. A lot of Christians were underground. Uh, you know, righteous ones. Not fake ones. And there was a pastor there, because in this time, some righteous Christians left hiding to go out and preach the gospel. Because, you know, one of the requirements is you have to preach the gospel. Give me one more moment. Thank you. I had to get stopping because I'm getting ready for my appointment. Anyway, and the other time I had to get a different blouse. Anyway, um, so what happened was, was that Pastor came to, to he, he came out of the underground hiding. He risked his life because you know, we are required to preach the gospel in and out of season. And even if it's going to risk your life, God's going to test you, okay? It's point blank. So he came out. And he went to uh, this detention center for, for youths. I think it was for troubled youths. But there was a young kid there. So um, he came to see the youth because the youth was going through some stuff, rough stuff. But the youth was troubled and stuff like that. So. The pastor goes, um, you know, Jesus Christ loves you and stuff like that. And then the, the kid goes, I knew you were one of them effing Christians because I saw your Bible. And he saw the Bible like in a duffel bag or that the priest had, a pouch, because Bibles were out loud, out, excuse me, outlawed too. So the pastor goes, 
pastor goes, um, you don't have to live this way. You know, I know there's a lot of suffering. He's like, look, I'm, an, I'm a Muslim. That's what the kid said. And don't try to convert me to your... Uh, kid said, don't try to convert me to your um, effing religion. Something like that. He said, but I have something for you. You won't like that. The kid told him. This led me to believe, ladies and gentlemen, that eyes, the Islamic faith was the uh, was the um, the primary religion, the primary faith. Even though we all know it's a false religion, okay? It was the primary faith and the primary religion um, in this time, okay? Because he goes like this to the pastor: No, I'm not going to convert to your effing uh, faith, something like that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Follow your F in Christ, but I have a proposition for you. The kid told him. So the kid goes, um, the kid said to the pastor, uh, either you renounce Jesus Christ and you convert to being a, you know, a Muslim, or the kid said to him, uh, I will kill you. The pastor said, I will never renounce Jesus Christ. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. So the kid said, you know what? Not all of us Muslims are hard. I have some compassion. You can call your family because that's the last thing you're ever going to do. So the kid or the guy picked up his cell phone and Again, cell phones were even illegal back then. Only certain people can have it. So it was a surprise that Christian had it. But we all know that with Jesus Christ, anything is possible. Because the Lord will provide for his sheep. Amen? So the pastor walked, dialed and told, and was telling his wife, and I think he had four kids, that he loved them and stuff. And his wife was crying like a hero on the phone. And the pastor... Um, The kid goes, give me the phone, something like that, like that, and then the kid placed the phone down, but he never hung up on the pastor's family. He said, and then the kid said, even though your family cannot see you, but they'll be able to hear you die because that same thing that's going to happen to you is going to happen to them, something like that. So the kid pointed the gun at the pastor. The pastor was saying, Lord, have mercy on me, Jesus, please take me home. And then it was weird because the scene went away from the room to outside in the street. And it goes back to the scene in the outside in the street where people are rioting, starving. They are uh, they're rioting, they're starving, they're begging for money. There's different soldiers of different countries roaming the streets, Humvees, different uh, military flags of different countries all over what used to be American government buildings. A lot of the buildings were run down, and uh, the dream ended where you hear the gunshot go off, okay, and then the gunshot echoes through the air as the people are in the middle of the street rioting and screaming and starving, okay? So the scene goes back to the room, and you see the pastor with a bullet in his head, He's looking up and he's smiling. That means he went to heaven because he died for Jesus Christ. And the Bible's still in his hand. And what was ironic is that the Bible was on... I have to look up the scripture, guys. But I believe it was the scripture either where the Lord Jesus Christ talks about how many will be hated for his name's sake and even taken into prison and synagogues and killed. And then there's an, or the one in the scriptures in the book of Revelation where the saints were, were uh, massacred for the faith. They became martyrs. And where the, um, the saints are asking the Lord to take revenge on the blood of the saints. And how the nation of the United States was um, waging war against the saints and how the nation of the United States was... Uh, so to speak, and I'm paraphrasing here, 
not only bathing in the blood of the saints, but responsible for the repercussions of killing God's sheep. So, I woke up from that dream and I, and I prayed to God because this is what's coming, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? I want you to take this to the Lord in prayer, but I firmly believe this is what's coming. Because there are so many things that are happening that is increasing Christian persecution. And I've already told you that I had a dream about the uh, about how, how I saw that gay marriage was legal in all 50 states. I had that dream like four months ago, and I had it again six months ago. Before it ever happened, and that, that prophecy came to pass. And the Lord told me that that was biblical prophecy, that, that that was part of biblical prophecy, because that decision is going to increase Christian persecution big time, and it has already started, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot sit here and tell you how many brothers and sisters in Christ I see get persecuted every day because they oppose gay marriage. How the churches are being attacked, a few righteous ones. I'm not talking about just the building structure, I'm talking about the sheep, the human beings. And this dream was disturbing because it's a sign of what's to come. The Lord told me he was going to strip this nation of every wealth it had, and he was going to make this nation a poor one. Very poor. Worse than the poorest nation presently on the earth. And if you have nations that are begging from, you know, people on the street begging for money, they're fighting, they're rioting, trying to survive, stuff like that, that's a problem. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know how else to put it to you. What I'm telling you is that the United States is in serious trouble. Serious trouble. And like I said, in this dream, it was a time that I believe the rapture did not take place yet. And a, and, and a lot of people are depending on the rapture to happen. Even before that stuff hits. There are some people, especially preacher rapture believers, that, let me see how much I have left to record on this. Not much, okay. That are, uh, people that are, uh, Questioning why the rapture hasn't taken place yet. Okay? And it's not going to happen when they want it. On their timing, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen when they want it. That's why I always stress to you all, and I tell you all, to prepare for anything. Because in this dream, a person died for Christ, and another saint was suffering. So, what the dream is saying is that these times are coming... To be ready and be prepared and to uh, be ready to die for Jesus Christ at a moment's notice, without a moment's notice, forget a moment's notice. Be ready to die for Jesus Christ because these times are coming. They're coming, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? And I'm telling you all this. Because I do care about you. You are saints. You are brothers and sisters in Christ. And I don't know about you, but I sure as hell, excuse the expression, hell, I'm sorry. I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to see that time of what's to come, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. That time is coming upon us. So even though I don't want to be left behind, I don't want to be stuck here. I'm sure you don't. You still have to be prepared for what's to come. So you have to be prepared to die for Jesus, to suffer for him, to go through trials because he's going to test you to see if you are of him, and just know and have faith that he's always going to deliver you no matter what. Okay? 
So, see how much time is left on this? About a couple of minutes. So what I'm asking you guys to do is to not take my, what I say at face value. When delivering these messages to you, I'm asking you to please take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. Okay, ask him if what I tell you is true. You know that there's scriptural backing to back this up. Okay, what I'm also asking you guys is, to, like I said, pray on this. Go into your prayer closet, pray on it. Um, I was also told by the Lord that soon, I don't know when, I will be leaving this ministry. I don't know how soon. I'm doing deliverance cases, help, help ministering to the lost, military families, and their soldiers. I don't know if it could be because I'll be doing that on a full-time basis. Okay? It could be. I don't know what the reason is, but it's soon I will keep you updated. I left the, the ministry once before on YouTube when I came back. And I came back quickly. Okay? Because of all the false prophecies that were being given out, false divinations, the lies all over YouTube, you know? But at this point in time, that won't be the reason if I come back. You will have to use ask the Lord for discernment if you don't want to get deceived. But I was told that I would be leaving the ministry soon. I don't know when. This ministry on YouTube, not the ministry as a whole. I don't know when. I'll keep you updated. That's beyond that's that's proof, ladies and gentlemen. This is the last days.